Okay, OD solvers in MATLAB, shifting gears a little bit from simulation of data with noise. OD45 is probably a review for most of you, so I'm not, I'm actually not even going to go through it. Uh, we sort of, um, I expect you to be able to read up on it again. What I am going to talk about are stiff systems. So the, the reading was pr primarily also on stiff systems, and I'm not gonna go into the theory of stiff, stiff systems, but I want you to understand that you know how in, and you, I think you implemented like a Rangakuta method back in Marcus's class, right? So um, you know how there's, there's this estimation of a step size involved in numerical integration using ODE solvers, right? And this step size, even in ODE 45, can change, right? But you can imagine that if you have a differential equation where the dependent variable y is such that it has a component that varies over a very long time scale, right? And it has a component that varies over also a very short time scale, so it's got some transient behavior, right? And that it has to do the computations for both of those components. If the integrator has to do computations for both of these components all the time, right, then it'll end up taking very, very small steps. Right. Because it has to get all the transient behavior. It has to be able to record all the transient behavior in addition to getting the longer term component. Which means that even for the longer term component, it's probably gonna take very, very, very small steps. Intuitively, what that means is, um, so in general, it's hard to, you can't just say based on some of the mathematical definitions, you can't come up with stiff systems. At least, I, 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 there's no easy way to come up with a stiff system, but you can sort of, um, uh, to predict a stiff system, but you can sort of uh, understand them once you encounter them. And I'll tell you how you, when you encounter them. So in general, um, so yes, yeah, so we were talking, so in more sort of, in terms of functions you've seen, you can think of an exponential, right? If I have a function which is e to the power minus thousand t, as opposed to something which is e to the power minus 0.1 t, the e to the power minus 1,000 t is going to be like a transient, right? It's a very fastly decaying function as opposed to the e to the power minus 0.1 t, right? It's gonna decay very, very slowly. Does that make sense? And so if you have some complicated system involving such vastly differing signals, you can imagine that the ODE, the ODE step size calculation can get mixed up, right? and that you end up taking very, very, very short step sizes, even though the time interval over which you need to integrate is huge. And so OD45 actually breaks down there. It will give you a solution, but it'll take a very, very, very long time. And there are special um, solvers in MATLAB. The most important one for you to know about is OD15S, which help you solve those systems. Now, when do you know, this is a, going back to the question of when you sort of figure out you have a stiff system, if OD, so you can do some rough um, calculations as your reading suggested regarding the Jacobian matrix, right, which was talked about in your reading. Um, um, I'm not going to go into too much detail about that right now, um, but we can talk about it after class. But you can do some rough calculations. Otherwise, the ballpark rule, if OD45 is not working, it's too slow as compared to what you expect, switch it to OD15S and see what's going on. There are some rough math calculations that you can also do to justify your, the switch, and we can talk about that after class. I don't, if we start talking about linear algebra right now, we're just not gonna finish. But, but for all you need to know is if OD45 is not working, you can switch to OD15S. If it's not working in the sense if it's too slow, switch to OD15S and see if it gives you helpful results. It is something that your system might be stiff, right? So, and again, let's, let's talk about the TCA cycle a little bit. So um, I'm gonna show you the model, but why the TCA cycle model is stiff is, is because in the TCA cycle you have some metabolite pools which are extremely small in size. So alpha ketoglutarate, for example, is extremely small in size in terms of, con in terms of concentration as opposed to glutamate. Like there's like two orders, three orders of magnitude difference. What does that mean? When you have 13C coming in, going back to the example of MRS, alpha ketoglutarate hits steady state extremely quickly. But glutamate, which is a much larger pool, of course to reach steady state it'll take a much longer time. Right? So again, that same sort of logic which I was telling you about e to the power minus 1000 T versus e to the power minus 0.1 T comes in this system. And it becomes stiff. 
And I'll justify why it is a stiff, stiff system right now. You have these equations uploaded. So this is sort of what the TCS cycle model looks like. And at the heart of it here are the, all the differential equations that describe it. But I'm just going to, what I'm do, going to do is I'm going to solve this system with 15S and I'm going to solve it with 45. And you'll see that 15S is a lot faster. Oh, well, not a lot faster in this case, but you can imagine when I have to do like 100,000 of these, then it makes a significant difference. Yeah. No, so it'll be it'll be transient. So, so right, but it, so again, one, yeah, it has to be quickly decaying at, at some point. But also, one has to realize that by changing the step size in a stiff system from a traditional solver's viewpoint, a drastic change in the output could result. That's why it's not able to accommodate a longer step size, right? Because OD45 is able to change its step size. It has the ability to change its step size, but some, the way it's seeing it, when it changes the step size even slightly, there's a dramatic change in the output. And so that's why it doesn't change the step size. You can imagine if you do a little bit more computation, which is what 15S does, then you can actually accommodate stiff behavior. Again, this might sound a little bit vague. You have to sort of take my word for it right now, because we're not going to go into the theory of it. And that's why I gave you sort of the, sort of the rule of thumb, which is if 45 is being slow, switch to 15S. OK, so I'm going to run this. And so you can see that here, the reason why it's significant will come from the next example I show. But 15S took about 0.55 seconds, and 45 took about 1.85 seconds. So 15S, and when you're doing sort of the sensitivity analysis that I was talking about, You'll be doing parameter estimation. Each parameter estimation in turn calls like OD, well, the OD solver 1,000 times. So if you're doing like 1,000 different parameter estimations times 1,000 OD calls, you, this you know, time save can be critical. Okay. So that's that. So that's about stiff systems. And you might ask, why use OD45 at all, right? And the reason to use OD45 is because it's more accurate than 15S in general. And the per step computational cost is lower, right? So OD15S is much more expensive per step. But what was going on with stiff systems is that the number of steps OD45 has to take as opposed to 15S is a lot greater. So and the re I'm going to justify that with another script here, which I've written, which is also available, which is called investigate ODEs. And here, all I'm doing is I have a simple function which I'm integrating. And we're going to look at the time it takes for 45 and 15S to solve the system. And then I'm calculating actually the variance between the solutions and the actual function, right? which is a measure of accuracy. And so what this tells me here is that OD45 has this accuracy, so it's much more accurate as compared to 15S, and that OD45 also takes the other. OK, so that's why you would generally use OD45. We're going to switch to the last part of the talk now, but I'll stop and take questions before moving on. Is this useful? You think that this might, so this is something, stiff equations you might encounter. As I said, I encountered them when I was uh, doing the CCS cycle modeling stuff. And I think traditionally, the implementation was through 45, and it took a lot of time. And I switched it to 15 as a result. Might encounter them at times. It's just good to know that this, might, this problem might happen with 45. And of course, Wikipedia has great articles about this and stuff like that, so you can go read about it. But the actual math of it is pretty interesting. The, what I was talking about with transient versus long term, if some of you are familiar with eigenvalues, it relates to eigenvalues. 